Okay, um, this is part two of my series on budgeting. This might be the last one. I don't really have that much to say. Um, I hope my last video didn't sound kind of harsh. I know people are struggling right now. I know that things are a little bit different right now with the economy and everything, but I was just trying to explain to people to think things through is the main, my main point of that last video was to think major purchases through and even little purchases like going out to eat and Starbucks and things like that, what kind of phone you carry, all those things really, really add up fast and can get you in trouble before you know it. So think things through and that leads me into my video today, thinking things through. I'm gonna talk about thinking through little purchases. Now, as you know, I've mentioned before that my husband's between jobs right now. And so I've been thinking through little purchases a lot more than I have in years and years and years. Even something as small as getting a Starbucks, I decide most of the time, nine times out of 10, I'll change my mind and I won't get it because it's just three, four, five dollars down the tubes. I can go home and have a cup of coffee. I can put chocolate sauce in it and some milk and crushed ice and have my own frappuccino or whatever it's called at home. It's not that hard to do, to do without. And speaking of that, one thing I started doing years ago that has saved me a ton of money is I never get in my car without a big glass of ice water in an insulated cup with crushed ice full of water or iced tea. I never leave my house without it. And I cannot tell you years before that, every time I went out and ran errands, I would go in and get a Coke. I mean, go through a drive through and get a Coke or get a Starbucks or whatever it is. And this has saved me so much money, just that simple tip of never leave the house without something to drink. It'll save you money every single time, I guarantee it, if you're that kind of person that needs something to drink while you're driving. Okay, now, today I'm gonna to talk about delayed gratification. I know that's an ugly word in our society now because everything's instant and everything's fast. But you need, if you're having financial difficulty or you're trying not to spend so much money all the time, or you're trying to save money, or you're trying to pay off debt, whatever, you need to train yourself, if you haven't already, into not thinking you have to have instant gratification all the time. I'm going to give you a couple of examples of things I've been doing that have really helped me. Now, before I started watching YouTube, as I told you, I had one lipstick, one blush, one face makeup, uh, one eyeshadow palette, maybe it had two on it, uh, two lipsticks. I mean, I just wasn't into makeup and stuff. Well, watching YouTube, so I got really into makeup and I bought quite a bit in the beginning. Well, pretty soon I realized that A, a lot of things that seem like a I can't live without it product aren't that great once you get them home and you use them a while. B, just because they work from some, for someone else doesn't mean they're going to work for you. And C, most of the time I had something at home that would do the same thing. Okay? So, what I started doing is when I would watch my beauty gurus that I absolutely love, like Emily Noel or one of those, and she had a product that I just thought, you know, I really need, I really want to try, blah, blah, blah. I, would, I started keeping a little note card and I would make a list and I would write down the product and where she got it, maybe, maybe the price. And I would keep that in my purse. And then if I went to Target and I thought, oh, you know, I could go get a new lipstick today, I would have the one I really thought I wanted on this list with me. But let me tell you what really happened to this list, nine times out of 10. I pulled one out the other day. It had like 15 things on it that I'd written over a couple of month period, things I really, really wanted. There was not one thing on that list that I still felt like I really, really wanted. And when I wrote it down, I thought I couldn't live without it. I had not bought one thing on that card. I pitched the card, I quit doing it because I quit. I've trained myself not to think I have to run out and have instant gratification at Walgreens or Target or wherever, okay? So when you think you really want something, write it down. I bet you nine times out of 10, a week later, you're not really gonna want it anymore and think of the money. There was probably on that list in my purse, easily $100, easily $100 worth of makeup that I did not need that I thought I wanted, okay? So I keep a list and that's delaying my gratification, but really it's helping me make a decision of whether I really want it. Now you may think, oh, that's goofy, makeup's cheap. Well, yeah, it can add up, it can add up, especially if you're a Sephora girl, okay? Now, something else I do with needs versus wants. 
Um, now this may sound so silly, but it's helping me. Just like I said, the girls that need a budget, that helps them. This is helping me. It's so easy for me to see something, mainly on YouTube, jump on Amazon and order it, click on my debit card number that's stored in there, and voila, it's ordered. I can do that really, really quickly. Well, I changed what I do there. I have everything that I think I want, I put in my on my Amazon wish list, or I just put it in my cart and don't check out. The other day, I clicked on my wish list. I hadn't looked at it in a couple of months, and I made it, you know, three or four month period. There was not one thing in my Amazon wish list that I still thought I had to have, from paperback books to, um, like, one thing I really wanted was uh, um, packing cubes for packing that go in your suitcase. I really thought I had to have those. I just had to have those. I wasn't even going on a trip and I thought I had to have them. Now in the past, I would have just ordered them and not thought anything of it because I had enough income back then to just do that. Well, now I'm trying to be much more careful, obviously. I don't really need those packing cubes. You know, I don't really need that paperback book. I don't really need that novel or whatever. It's so fun because you've got it there in case you do think you want it or you think about it for 30 days, then maybe you should order it if it's something you want that badly. Um, now, here's a story of some, well, there was something about Amazon I wanted to say. Oh, about books. Just last week, there was a certain book that a girl was talking about. It was a cookbook. Now, I'm not really into cooking, but I wanted this cookbook so bad because she made it sound so great. It was, um, oh, my favorite, favorite, Organized Like Jen or My Housewife Life, whichever uh, channel I was on at the time. She had this cookbook, Martha Stewart Cupcakes, and I just had to have that cookbook. I wanted it so bad. So I went online. I found it on Amazon. It was $17.99. I didn't order it. Guess what I did? I went to my library's website, I clicked on it, I put it on hold, I went and picked it up, I thumbed through it, I wrote a few recipes down, and now I'm going to return it for free. I didn't have to have that cookbook. I mean, it's amazing how many times this has happened to me. Now, my daughter just drove up, so I'm going to have to cut this video short, but I will do this part two in a minute, and then I'll put these two videos up on the same day, because part two has something to do with this fabulous object and saving money. And you're going to want to see it because it's a great story. Anyway, talk to you later. Bye.